Hello students, this is Mr. Downey again. We're continuing with some word problem practice. Prior to viewing this video, you should have viewed the basic math practice. And you should have viewed the videos on basic algebra as well. That will prepare you for com combining those two co topics for what we're looking at here. So let's jump right in. If a skateboarder has a momentum of 100 kilograms meters per second and a mass of 50 kilograms, what is the velocity of the skateboarder? Now we have these steps lined up because these steps are going to keep us in order and keep us very logical. We want to make sure that we're going through a certain series that flows and makes sense. This helps us know what to do next. So where do we start? Step one, obviously. Step one is a simple step where we write down our numbers. Now I am not just writing down the numbers. I'm writing down the numbers and I'm writing down their units. Because this is not just math, it is physics. These numbers mean something. They represent quantities in the world. It is important I run out the whole thing. Now, we haven't gotten to the point where we're going to start abbreviating these. So, kilograms meters per second, I know that's long, but it's important to write the whole thing. So, we see that 100 kilograms meters per second is different than 50 kilograms. They are different units. Now, that's all step one is. Just, just writing those down. Identifying comes in step two. Now, the identification is a bit easier here because this question is, contains keywords. Now, step two is the most important and probably the most difficult of all the steps, but it is multiple choice. One of these words on this formula chart is what we're going to identify that as. Now, anytime you see a word that was on that formula chart, also included in the question, if a skateboarder has a momentum of 100 kilograms meters per second, we know that momentum is important because it's written on the formula chart. And it says right here, momentum of 100. We know that this 100 kilograms meters per second is a momentum and a mass of 50 kilograms. We know that this is a mass. Now that we have the numbers written down and we have the units included and we've identified their measurements, we go to step three. In step three, we want to know what the question is. What is the question asking us for? It wants to know what is the velocity. So the question is velocity. Now the order is important, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, because once I've done 1, 2, 3, I've identified the three key words that this problem has contained. Momentum, mass, velocity. Now velocity being the most important for step 4 because it's what I'm looking for. In step 4 I'm picking out a formula. So I look up and down this formula chart and I'm looking for velocity. I see that there's acceleration equals final velocity minus initial velocity over change in time. I see that there's momentum equals mass times velocity. I see that there's kinetic energy equals one half mass times velocity squared. All of those equations contain velocity. It's important my equation has velocity in it because if there is no velocity in the equation, I will never find velocity there. Now, which equation is also fleshed out with the things I know is this one because it has velocity and also has mass and momentum, which we've talked about. Now if I follow the line over to the side, I see that momentum equals mass times velocity. Momentum is abbreviated by P because the M is already taken by mass. That would be confusing. So, step four, momentum equals mass times velocity. In step five, we're gonna go ahead and manipulate because we're trying to find velocity and clearly velocity is not by itself. This equation is currently really convenient to solve for momentum. It's still the right equation. We just need to rearrange it first. So we're looking here, and we see my velocity is here. Here is V. It is not by itself. So we ask ourselves this. What is happening to V? It is being multiplied by M. What is the opposite of multiplied by M? It is divided by M. I divide the whole side by M and the other side, because what we do to one, we must do to the other. Now, we decided to divide by m. The reason doing the opposite always works is because now there's an m on top and an m on bottom. Anytime we find ourselves in that situation, m divided by m is one. One times v is v. That's the really long and difficult way of saying that m over m cancels. And I rewrite, p over m equals v. Now, V is by itself. Now I can do step six. At this point, if I've done step one, two, three, four, and five, step six is easy. I don't have to think about it. There's no thought required. I say, okay, how much is momentum? I don't have to go reread the problem. I'm just pulling out the formula chart. I just look at what I've written. Oh, momentum equals 100. How much is mass? 
Oh, mass equals 50. No thought required. It's already done. We did it earlier. We wrote it down so we didn't have to do it again. V, V is what we're looking for. At this point, we do want to write this down. This is where we'd pull out a calculator if we had more difficult numbers, but it's important to write it down first. That way we can make sure that we don't make the accidental mistake of putting in 50 over 100 in our calculator, which is an easy thing for any of us to do. By writing it down, it gives us work to check. It reduces the amount of errors. It means we'll get more problems right. So 100 divided by 50 is simply 2. The units are meters per second. We're going to study those more later for right now. It is important that you're able to follow those steps. You follow the logic. You see how I got to the beginning to the end. Following those six steps.